Hello everyone, in this video we will be using the Lagrangian to find the equations of motion for a mass spring system, and then we will solve the differential equation. Here I have two mass spring systems, one which is on a horizontal surface and one which is at an angle of alpha. The first thing that we need to do is define our generalized coordinate system. So on the left mass spring system, we will define x to be positive on the right and horizontal. On the mass spring system on the right, we will define x to be positive when it is downwards at an angle of alpha from the horizontal. Now we could start making our Lagrangian. So first thing, we need the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the mass spring system on the left is equal to 1 half m x dot, which is the velocity, squared. And that is also the kinetic energy of the mass spring system on the right. Now we need the potential energy. So for the mass spring system on the left, the potential energy is just going to be equal to 1 half k x squared. The potential energy for the mass spring system on the right is a little bit different. For one, it has gravitational potential energy. But this is not just going to be equal to negative mgx. I will define my zero point for the gravitational potential energy as the top. And then if I make a right triangle, you can see that for every x, it moves down by x sine of alpha. This means that the potential energy is going to be equal to 1 half k x squared minus m g x sine of alpha. I can now construct the Lagrangian, which is the difference between the kinetic and potential energies. This is the equation we will use to find the equations of motion for the mass spring systems. We start by taking the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. Using the power rule, this is equal to negative kx. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x for the second mass spring system will be equal to negative k x plus m g sine of alpha. For the other side of the equation, we need to do the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. From the power rule, this equals m x dot. And the same holds true for the other mass spring system. Now we could find the derivative with respect to time of the partial of a Lagrangian with respect to x dot. And that is going to equal mx double dot for both mass spring systems. We can now finally plug it into our main equation and get that x double dot is equal to negative kx. And for the second mass spring system, we get that x double dot is equal to negative kx plus mg sine of alpha. These are both differential equations and will typically be written as shown on the screen. The equation on the left is a linear homogeneous differential equation, and the solution is needed to solve the equation on the right. So now let's solve this. So let's assume that x of t, which is the same thing as x, is equal to 
e to the lambda t. Then, using the chain rule, we could find the equations for x dot of t, which would be equal to lambda e to the lambda t, as well as x double dot of t, which will be equal to lambda squared e to the lambda t. Now we could plug in our assumption into the original differential equation, and we get that e lambda squared e to the lambda t plus k e to the lambda t is equal to zero. We can then factor out an e to the lambda t. Because it is exponential, we know that e to the lambda t will never equal zero. This means that m lambda squared plus k must equal zero. This means that lambda squared is equal to negative k over m. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that lambda is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative k over m, which is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of k over m. For simplicity purposes, we can call the square root of k over m equal to omega, which is known as the angular frequency. This means that lambda is equal to plus or minus i omega. Looking back, we know that x of t is equal to e to the lambda t. I decided to go on another page just so we could have more space. With the information we have, we know that x of t must be equal to e to the i omega t and e to the negative i omega t. Due to the differential equation being linear and homogeneous, we can put these two solutions as a linear pair multiplying each one by a constant, in this case c1 and c2. Now we have e to the power of i in both of these terms. That means we can use Euler's identity, which says that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Using Euler's formula, we can get an equation for x of t as c1 cosine of omega t plus c1 i sine of omega t plus c2 cosine negative omega t plus c2 i sine of negative omega t. Cosine and sine are even and odd functions respectively. So that means cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta. And sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. After implementing this in the equation and then factoring out cosines and sines, we get that x of t is equal to c1 plus c2, all of that times cosine of omega t plus, in parentheses, c1 minus c2 times i sine of omega t. However, one thing to take note is that c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. So that means both c1 plus c2 as well as c1 minus c2i are both constants. So we can replace them with just c1 and c2. From this, we get our final x of t 
which is equal to C1 cosine of omega t plus C2 sine omega t. It is also important to remember that omega is equal to the square root of k over m. Now we can look at the differential equation for the second mass spring system. I have put it here as well as the solution to the first differential equation. When you have a differential equation like this that is not equal to zero, the solution to the differential equation when it is equal to zero is called the complementary solution or x of c. Finding the particular solution to a differential equation is just one of the infinitely many solutions. However, when adding it to the complementary solution, it adds more solutions, but it does not change the value because you're just adding zero to the right side of the equation because the complementary solution was when the left side of this differential equation was equal to zero. For the particular solution, we assume that it has the same form as the right side of the equation. So in this case, mg sine of alpha is a constant. So we can assume that x of t is equal to a, which is any arbitrary constant, which means that x dot of t is equal to zero. And finally, x double dot of t is equal to zero as well. Plugging a and its derivatives back into the equation, we get that m times zero plus k times a is equal to mg sine of alpha. We can solve for a and find that it is equal to mg sine of alpha divided by k. Because we assumed that our particular solution was equal to a, that means that our particular solution is equal to mg sine of alpha divided by k. Finally, adding those two solutions together, we get that x of t is equal to c1 cosine of omega t plus c2 sine omega t plus mg sine of alpha divided by k. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye.